Hey everybody, I'm BJ Flagg. And I'm Rich G, and this is episode 329, Motivating Your Team for Success. Who can turn the world on with her smile? Who can take a nothing day and suddenly make it all seem worthwhile? Well, it's you, girl, and you should know it. With every glance and every little movement you show it. Love is all around, no need to waste it. You can have a town, why don't you take it? You're gonna make it after all. Yay! That Yay! Was Yay! That was, if, if you know, if you're a little older, you know that's from the Mary Tyler Moore show. Exactly. Exactly. Talk about motivating, Rich. Yeah, yes. we're, we're, we usually don't start the podcast singing, but we thought that's such a great song. She's coming into Minneapolis. She's starting a new job and she's so motivated. We thought we'd oh, yeah. start with the song, but motivating your team is essential for success in the ever evolving landscape of 2024. Yeah, and we're going to dive right in and share a number of different tips just to kind of get you into that 2024 psyche. And we're excited. So the number one, the first thing is delegate. Empower through ownership and accountability. Yep, we need to have everybody delegate and celebrate. That's a big thing that we do at our company for sure. Make your team members stakeholders. Why do I say that? Because even if you take a nugget of their idea and have them included, they feel the ownership. Do yes. it. It's best, right? Yeah, absolutely. So many of my clients don't delegate. And yeah. I go, you need to delegate because they, they're then accountable. They own it. And there's yeah. the, that importance that feels and that motivates people. Oh, for sure. And, you know, pair up the team members, you know, you might have older with younger mentor with mentee, you know, just mix it up, mix it up because that gives them energy. Absolutely gives them energy. Why should you do it? Because empowerment is magical for morale and it's contagious. Yeah. Contagions can go two ways, bad and good. We want them to go good. Yeah. When your people, most of the time, your people are doing the same old stuff, basic yeah. things. And when you empower them, when you give them ownership, like I want you to own this area or this project or this initiative, there's importance. And that, that shows that I trust you to handle this. Yeah. And that's, that's where your people grow. So our second topic is train continuous learning and skill development this is so important uh and and i say this to a lot of my business clients you need to invest in your people because they're investing in you they're giving you their time you need to invest in them also have them learn new skills uh attend workshops or even certifications so they can grow, uh, pay for uh, you know, a class for them to go to. That This keeps your team updated with the latest industry trends. Yeah, you, can, you can't beat it. The why of it all shows, it shows that you value their growth and their career progression. That is the sticky glue that keeps everybody together. It is so excellent. Yeah, so many people, I mean, and I really meant it, you're investing in your people. And, you know, instead of like giving them a promotion or money, which is good, but when yeah. you invest in the in growing them in knowledge, like I want you, a lot of uh, corporate clients go, I want to give you a coach. And they, they hire me to coach their people. And they go, I want to reward you with a high performance coach. You know, yes. I'll reward you with training. We're going to send you out to Wharton and have you uh, learn about leadership and stuff. Ah, you can't beat that. You yes. really cannot beat that. Number three is RRR. You talk about this all the time. Recognize and reward regularly. You know, attaboys are great, you know, but they're vague. Hey, you know, you're passing in the hall. Hey, great job. No, 
don't do that anymore. Be specific. Look at them in the eye and acknowledge what they have done on a project. And you know what? It's going to take a little homework for you because you need to kind of have a couple to go ready to go. So when you walk the hall or you are on a Zoom or you're doing something, you're ready to say that little thing. You know, um, am I right, Rich? Like when you're in a meeting. Absolutely. In meetings, mention people by name, uh, uh, you know, a pivot or success, something that they've progressed on. Um, right. Because when you point to high performers, everybody wants to be like them. What you're doing is like a vacuum. You're attracting the average performers and the bad performers to go, look, Mary's doing a great job or Steve's doing a great job. Be more like them. And when yeah. you acknowledge people and recognize them and also reward them, uh, they're going to stand out. They're going to feel good about themselves. Yeah. And I think a lot of uh, managers are concerned about what does reward look like? It could be a quick note. It could be a coffee, you know? It could be a bonus for sure on a larger project, something happens, but don't, don't expect it. Like the employee shouldn't expect it. It should be an unexpected gift. All yeah. we get notes. Yeah. All we get. I remember when I was in corporate, I was working one day, it was in the summer and my boss's boss came in and he, it was first thing in the morning. He comes in, he goes, Rich, what are you doing today? Oh, I'm working on this. He goes, can you do that tomorrow? And I went, yeah, sure. He goes, we're going to the tennis open. We're going to the open. And he goes, I've got a bunch of tickets. And I was like, okay. And he grabbed like two or three other people. We all hopped in his car, drove down uh, to to New York and went oh, to the open. And the only thing that sucked was I was sitting in a suit the whole time <laughs> in the hot sun. But other than that, it was great. We had a ball. It was, but see, it's like that instantaneous thing that you could do. Actions. Why do you do it? Because actions are remembered. Oh, yeah. You know, you remember the time that your, you know, grandma made, um, you know, apple pancakes for you. You know, you remember like actions. That's the same thing that can happen in your business. Actions are so fantastic. So number four is fun. Make work positive and inclusive. Because yes. when you do that, it, it promotes positivity and inclusivity. Encourage open communication and collaboration. Have fun. Ensure that everyone feels respected and part of the team. Yeah. You know, I always, um, whenever I think about this, I go back to the office episode where they had a party committee. Yes. And they, <laughs> and they took it so seriously. And, you know, people would bring in the most bizarre food and things like that. But you know what? It was a great team builder. You know, kudos to, uh, you know, everybody who worked on that show. That showed how being together as a team could really do such a great job. When, when I worked at this one company, uh, we used to like celebrate birthdays. We would celebrate when I, I turned 40, they had a big party for me. I didn't even know they knew I was turning 40. They had a big party. We would have showers for women that were having babies. Uh, it was, it was just great. I mean, uh, anytime they'd have a party when we were doing a big launch, they would make sure at least once or twice a week to to have everybody come down at five o'clock and they'd have beer and snacks and stuff just because we were working late to get yeah. things going. So it was nice. They, they fuel us with liquor. So uh, <laughs> not so much anymore. So not the big much. why is a positive work culture enhances motivation and your team spirit. Yeah. And number five is open up, share your vision and your goals. This you know, there's a lot of talk these days about introverts versus extroverts. As a manager, you're always aware of your team and which way they may be. And, you know, what what you're forgetting is you're not looking at yourself and you might be an introvert. And it makes it darn hard for you to continually to keep use up that social capital every time you see his team member. So there are ways to do it in microbursts. And I guess that's what I'm really trying to promote here is that be that manager that 
when you see someone be able to share moments. You know, somebody like Steve Jobs, he was a man of few words, but people remember each of those words. And you can imagine he probably was an introvert. That was just probably his thing. But as we talked um, in previous weeks during our um, year-long wrap-up, having a clear vision and a goal list helps you talk to people on your team. So if they say something like, I'd like to see you, have them in. Absolutely a great yes. time to connect what they want to talk about to what your vision and goal is, right, Rich? That interconnection. Absolutely. And everybody goes like, you know, well, why should I share my vision and goals. Well, it goes back to number one, the more people who own your vision and goals, the easier it's going to be for the entire team, A, to understand it and to buy in. I always say, when you're the boss of a team, you're like an evangelist. You're, you're selling a religion to yeah. your people and you need to get them to buy into that religion. And yeah opening up and sharing your vision and goals and going, this is where I see this company going. This is what I'd like to accomplish in 2024. This is what I, I, we should accomplish in 2024. That's where the power comes in. Oh yeah. that And, and it's, you know, you're part of this team and you're going to be able to get this to happen. So it's so powerful. Well, our last topic is number six, be flexible hybrid and work-life balance. And I know this is something that's really been dumped on a lot of businesses because of the pandemic and stuff, but it's a new world. It's 2024. You need to offer flexible working arrangements. Um, you know, years ago, the only time I got to work at home is when I had two feet of snow on, you know, on my road and I couldn't get to work. That's the only time. Nowadays, if you could trust people and you could track people, offer flexible working arrangements, give them remote work options, you know, maybe on a Friday they could work from home or flexible hours. I used to come in early. I used to come in at 630 in the morning and leave at five. And at first my boss said, well, it really doesn't look good. You leaving at five. I go, I'm coming in at 630. Everybody else comes in at 830, nine o'clock. I'm getting yeah. two and a half hours of work done before everybody yeah. else. I wanted yeah. to miss the traffic. So. Exactly. And I think the best thing about you doing that was that you had that alone time. Mm -hmm. You had focus time to get it done. So Absolutely. people being flexible after a little encouragement paid off. Absolutely. Um, so and also understand their personal needs. Some people have needs. They have kids. They might have a sick spouse. They might have uh, parents that aren't doing well. I always call it having a, a virtual bank account. Maybe we could do a whole uh, a talk on this, but the yeah. whole idea is like building up their savings account. And, yeah. you know, if somebody, yeah, go ahead. If you need to take the day off, go for it. You need to take two days off. That's fine. I totally understand. They're going to be more loyal to you if you do that sort of thing. So oh. why, why do you do it? Showing empathy increases loyalty and also reduce, reduces burnout with your people. Yeah, it, it and it is hard. You know, people um, don't want to ask. But if you get wind that their dad's not doing well, pull them in and yeah. just say, listen, I heard your dad's not doing well. Absolutely. We so make plans. let's we sum it up. Let's sum up these six ones. BJ, you go first. If you incorporate one or more of these strategies into your leadership approach, it could significantly enhance your motivation and drive your team towards success in 2024. Each method addresses different aspects of your work life. Which ensures a holistic approach to team motivation and success. And again, as we say uh, every time, you don't need to do all six. Just try no. one and then try another one. Uh, we don't want to dump everything on you, but if you try one, you see it works, try another. Try another. Um, but thank you everyone for tuning in to the Best Small Business Show. If you have, um, if this episode has been valuable to you, subscribe and share it with other budding entrepreneurs who might benefit. Yes, and the big thing is share it. Share it, tell other people about it, because if more people listen, it helps us come up with better topics. 
And that's it for this week. You can reach out to me at richg.com and find BJ at newrenew.com. Thanks to our editor and producer, Richard Scalzo, and have an unbelievable week. Catch you later.